folks. Welcome to the Blacksmith Show Shop. I'm Lena Ray for the Historic Arkansas Museum. And today we're working on a small project for one of the historic homes. Uh, we are starting uh, a cooking uh, frame. It's, uh, it's kind of like a camp set, but it sets on the hearth instead of sticking in the ground. So I'm simply just going to make the top spit that goes on it to, that holds um, an S hook or a trammel hook and then the, the Dutch ovens or the pot uh, that we're going to cook in will be hanging directly off this spit. So this is a 3 8 inch stock. It doesn't have to hold a lot of weight but it's got to be substantial enough to hold it. But before we get to that, let's look at what we've got in show and tell and we'll just talk just a minute about those things. We've got a good array of, of uh, items that are in progress or finished. And by the way, this is our documentation for the camp set that we're working on. And that piece across the top is what I'll be making in, for uh, the camera today. Uh, this is a project I'm working on. We've got a drawing to go by. This is really rough right now, but it's going to get better. John brought us a whole array of different historic style knives fixed blades as well as folders. He's, he's done a really good job. James has got a, a hunting knife in prog progress with a, a denim micarta handle, titanium guard, the blade. Of course, all this is going to be finished up and looking good when he gets done, but it's kind of like my knife. It's in progress, and we'll just have to work through all those stages. And Jimmy's got some ulus made and these these are actually uh usable um i mean all these are usable but these have actually been in his kitchen a while he just brought them he uses them to cut up different things he he, he skint fish with it he cut up vegetables so this style knife is from the extreme northwest alaska area um, and they they work really well there's these are really thin sharp tools uh, a lot of people refer to these as pizza cutters, but that's not exactly what they are. You could do that, of course, but look at the detail on some of those that John's got made. We think that some of the makers that come here and visit with us on a regular basis are doing really wonderful work. A lot of detail, a lot of research goes into these projects. Okay, back to the, back to the, uh, our project. So what I'm going to do is heat up about six or eight inches of this at first. I'm going to put a point on it, and then we're going to make a loop that's very similar to what's on this poker. And it's just a rudimentary uh, handle. It doesn't have to be anything particularly special. It just needs to be where if we want to grip it and turn it, we can. Pull it, pull it off the, off the, uh, the holder and either run it through a chicken or what have you, but mostly this will be to hang things from. So we're not gonna put any twists or any texture or anything like, we want it to be smooth so that it can be slid, the, the pot can be slid back and forth. So you try to get too fancy with some of this, it just sort of takes away from its function. But we want this to be rather simple. But I will put a point on it and make a little curl that seems to be um, make it look a little bit better come up to heat now i also put a point on this end too i'm holding it here right now so it's nice and cold nice and cool but in a similar way the poker has a point on it but it'll come after I cool the other end down, swap in, work on this end. So again, it's just pretty simple. But you know, you might want to see some hot, hot work. Speaking of hot, it's going to get hot today. We might get a little shower this afternoon to relieve some of that. Come on, let's get that hot. Now I'm listening for the airflow in the fire. When I hear that roar, I know that the temperature is coming up quick. So, yeah, there we go. I found the hot spot. So it's nice and hot. So here we go. 
So we're just going to put a simple point. cross section the mass you pull it out it's got a tiny cross section out near the end it's susceptible to burning so we want to get the fire hot and wait on it to heat up we may even heat back behind the point first and let let it uh, creep the heat creep over into the point so that's kind of what I've done here Watching it close so as not to burn it. Okay, not bad. So we we created a, a closed loop that on its own won't be snagging on things and looks okay at least looks okay now we're going to come this way with the with the loop so when you're creating a loop it takes probably more material more length than you might give it thought to first at first so Think about how much you're going to need. Uh, think about, you know, the circumference of a circle. Um, and if it's a, a given dimension across this part, say two inches, it'll be roughly a little over three times that. So we're going about six and a half, seven inches or so. We should be, have enough to make a two inch loop. And in most cases, like this, it's just a one of a kind. If it's close, it's good. The human hand and our eye will make up the difference. We're not trying to make a set of ten of these. The nature of this tool is it's one fireplace, one of these devices. So if it's close, it's good. And besides that, you, uh, when we're making historic pieces, <clears throat> or imitating historic pieces, we recognize, always recognize the individual impact uh, of the maker. They're unique. They made one of a kind of pieces, so that's what we're doing too. We're going, we're going to get close to what they have, and if it functions well, then we've succeeded. I'm going to cool off that little curl that I put on and I'm going to cool it off in the slack tub before I start rolling the, the loop. I'm looking at the color, checking it, make sure I've got enough material hot. First thing we do is cool that there off and then we just sort of allow and reach back and now we can hit it on that loop because we hardened it up so we just reach back here put that little kink in it it almost looks like a shepherd's hook. We 
just kind of bump it where we need it to go. And as long as that kind of the stalk, the main, the main bark comes out in the center of that, it, it's going to be okay. We're not looking to particularly imitate specific. All right, that looks pretty good. Looks, looks like what we would expect to see in a fireplace, so let's quench that. Now, we just want a basic point on the other end. And uh, it's a square stock, so we're just going to make a square point. It doesn't have to be any particular length. Uh, the only, I mean, what we what we may consider when we're making something like this and thinking about that point is will it have to pierce, say, a, a, a chicken or a turkey or something like that? Possibly. So we'll put a point on it, but it's not going to be needle sharp. We don't want it to be dangerous. We don't want to bump it. And, uh, cut herself or tear uh, any uh, pot holders or any tools or accoutrements that may be associated with with the uh, with the fireplace. Uh, clothing, uh, if we store it over to the side, we won't, don't want to tear the apron or dress or anything that somebody might be wearing. No pun intended. No, no. 
is that uh, you shouldn't feel bad if it takes three. Just, just, just do it. Get it right. Learn to um, just learn to get better as you go. I'm getting real picky about this because it's not necessary. But I want you to see. I want you to see it. And I want to tell you one other thing too while I've got this. How that I can see we got a point on it, so that's good. How that I can make it one small improvement with one heat on this right here. Let's look at that profile. You see, see how it's kind of elongated this way? All I'd have to do is just heat that whole thing up and bump it with my hammer and it would roll that back into a more of a teardrop shape, but more symmetrical. So just letting you know that every time I do something like this, I'm judging what would make it better. And that's what you, you ought to do when you're forging and working. What will make it better next time? So this thing is basically ready for the leg part of the uh, device, and I can't think of, I want to keep calling it fireplace set, but that's, fireplace set's a little different, it's got the shovel and poker and stuff. The name of this is escaping me right at the moment, you know what I mean, Spit. it's all a picture, but that's the first part of it, and then we'll follow, uh, follow or get really close to what we have as, as documentation, and uh, We'll see if we can't do some of that in front of you at the next video. But for, Lynn, for the Mu Historic Art Museum, I'm Lynn Ray, and I'm glad you was able to join us today.